Well, hello guys, it's Chris. From houses on islands to ones on hills and mountains, join me as I show you 12 of the most isolated homes on Earth. Number 12, Edinburgh of the Sea Seas, Tristan da Cunha. Sometimes it's not just a singular home that is isolated from the world. Rather, a whole town can be isolated. Such is the case with Edinburgh of the Sea Seas, Tristan da Cunha. This particular town is over 1,200 miles away from any other settlement, making it known as one of the most isolated places on Earth. The town itself was named after the Duke of Edinburgh back in 1867, when he actually came to visit the place. But in modern times, it's just known as the settlement by the 300 people that actually live there. The closest country to this place is actually South Africa, but it's farther than the nearest settlement, as it's nearly 1,500 miles away. While there is plenty of wildlife and diversity on the island, Edinburgh of the Sea Seas is also home to a volcano right in the middle. The volcano actually erupted back in 1961, and the people had to be evacuated. But because the volcano didn't do much damage to their homes and lands, they were able to get back there, and they've remained there to this day. Number 11. House on Elide Island In Iceland, there is a weirdly contoured island just off the coast called Elide Island, and on this island is a singular house, just one and it's placed near perfectly in the middle of the island. The house itself was actually built by a group of hunters from Iceland who were trying to catch a puffin. Why they felt the need to put the house right there is a bit of a mystery though. The house looks incredibly tiny compared to the rest of the island, and unlike many houses, it has to deal with its own unnatural weather phenomena. Mainly because of the contours of the island it's on, it has to endure incredibly violent winds. Number 10. Just Room Enough Island, Canada In Canada, there's a small island within the confines of the St. Lawrence River. The island is literally called Just Room Enough Island because someone realized that there was just enough room for a singular house and a very small yard. The one-story house is actually enough space to do most things that a homeowner would do, including having a tree and occasionally having room to put out chairs and such. However, because this is a flowing river, it has high and low tides. When the tide is high, the yard is consumed by the water. When the tide is low, the family can come out and relax on the yard and sit in chairs. To get around, the family has a boat that they use to get to the other side of the river if they need to go somewhere. Number 9. Villa Las Estrellas, Antarctica There are but two settlements on the entire continent of Antarctica, and one of them is the very secluded Villa Las Estrellas. This very small town, which at max houses about 100 people, was built on the coast of an island right next to the continent. It's one of the very few areas in which life can be sustained in regards to humans as animals of all kinds live in the frozen continent of Antarctica. In this settlement, there's a gym, a school, a church, even a post office. And for those who want the internet, they have Wi-Fi there. However, it is rooted in the school's computers, so you have to be there to get it. All this being said, though, the isolation comes at a cost, because the winter months of Antarctica are some of the most dangerous conditions on the planet Earth. And due to that, many of the settlements of this town actually leave it to ensure that they don't get hurt by the freezing cold, blistering wind, and mounds of snow. And now for number 8, but first be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up to let me know if you want more videos like these. Number 8. The Faroese Houses the Faroe Islands are located between Norway and Iceland, and some people decided to take a very Viking approach in regards to how they lived there. These secluded houses are built into the very ground they walk on, literally. What's more, the walls of their homes are pure stone. While other houses in the area are built in more traditional ways, these are more in the style of Vikings that lived between 400 and 600 AD. Some look at these houses and actually draw comparisons to the Hobbits of the Lord of the Rings franchise. But these kinds of homes were built long before J.R.R. Tolkien ever came to be. Number 7. Casa do Penedu, Guimadois, Faf Mountains, Portugal Casa do Penedu literally translates to House of Stone, which is a very apt title for this house in the Faf Mountains in Portugal. This particular house was literally carved out of four giant boulders. 
all four of which can still be seen today if you choose to go and visit this house for yourself. The house is fully functional, save for the fact that it does not have any electricity in it due to its construction and its placement in the mountains. So if you want to see it at night, you'll need to use candles. Weirdly enough, this house was actually built in 1947 and was constructed to be a vacation house for people who came to visit to get away from it all, which is likely why they didn't put electricity in the place. Number 6. La Riconada, Peru The country of Peru is home to the Andes Mountains, and within the Andes is a settlement known as La Rinconada. This town sits 17,000 feet above sea level. This in turn makes it the highest human settlement on Earth right now. What might surprise you, though, is that this town is not small. It's actually kind of large. 50,000 people reside in La Rinconada, which is quite a feat given that the mountain setting and terrain create many problems for its people. For example, due to its placement and height on the mountain, there's no running water near it. Plus, living at high altitude can affect your body in many ways if you're not adjusted to it. So why live in such a place? Well, because there's gold in the area. The Labella Derminte Glacier is located just above the town, and under that glacier is gold. And many people have come just to try and get some of it. Number 5. Katski Pillar, Central Georgia Located in the country of Georgia, a 120-plus foot stone pillar rises above the landscape of the local area. And on top of that stone pillar is a building, specifically a church. This Christian church is kept up by a monk who lives alone on the pillar. He maintains the church as part of his duty while also enjoying the view of the Georgia landscape. People can climb up the pillar via an iron ladder on the side of the cliff to go to the church, with the exception of women who are forbidden from doing so. What might be the most interesting part of this church is that its origin is rooted in the 7th century, which means that they had to use ancient methods to bring up all the materials to the top of the pillar so that the church could be built. Number 4. Rock House in Siberia lies a river called the Drina, and during the 1960s, a group of boys decided to come to a small island in the middle of the river and make a house for themselves. Due to the size of the island, they actually had to make a platform extension upon the rock and then build the house on that. The boys used this house as their own little clubhouse to have fun with during the summers. The house still stands there to this day. Weirdly, despite the height which the clubhouse is above the water, it has occasionally been destroyed due to the flooding of the area. However, every time it's been destroyed, someone rebuilds it. Thus, why it still stands. Number 3. Cooper Pedy The town of Cooper Pedy in Australia is next to an opal mine, and it's one of the most rich mines in the world. The problem, though, was that there was no shade in the area, so the townspeople and miners would roast under the sun when they weren't in the mines. So they decided to go and put their town in the very mines they were digging opal from. To their credit, they actually made quite a successful underground home. To the extent that they had churches, stores, bars, and even hot tubs that you can have installed in your home. Over 200 people live underground in the opal mines. And because of the enclosed nature of it, the temperature is much cooler than it is outside. Sounds like a win to me. Number 2. Supai Village, Arizona there is a Havasupai reservation in Arizona that contains the village of Supai. This place is so remote and secluded that you have to take a helicopter ride just to get to the village. There is a small trail you can take to get to it, but it's an 8 mile walk, so no roads lead to Supai. In fact, that path is the only way that the village can get mail and it's actually delivered by a mule, one of the few places in the US to still have mail delivered this way. One might think that this kind of seclusion wouldn't make it a popular destination, but that would be incorrect. Tourists love to come here because it's close to the Grand Canyon, and they can get a glimpse of the Havasu Falls. And number one, Cliff House. Inspired by the way barnacles can grow on the outside hull of a boat, someone decided to make a house that was built as an extension of a cliff in Australia, and this is known as the Cliff House. True to its word, it really is built into the side of a cliff on the coastline of the continent, and it's done so in a way that the house, which is six stories in size, actually doesn't block the views for someone who wants to see the landscape from the top of the cliff. Each layer of the cliff house has its own special area for you to do certain things in. You actually enter the house via the roof, which has an elevator, but not just for you, but for your vehicle of choice too. That means the parking spot is on the very first level, 
Then below that is the living area, kitchen, bedroom, and more. Each floor, though, is surrounded by windows, and that allows you to experience the view and landscape of the Australian coastline and the ocean. Thanks for watching, guys. Can you believe how isolated some of these homes are? Which one would you actually want to live in? I think I want to check out that cliff house. That sounds awesome. Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe. And give this video a thumbs up for more. See you next time!